You're listening to the Jiu Jitsu Lou podcast, and I'm Lou Temlett. I'm guessing you're having a good day because either you've been on the mats, are considering getting on the mats, or maybe taking yourself to train. I'm so happy you're here listening or watching this episode. Please don't tap out before the end. When you want to continue recovering from addiction, start training Jiu Jitsu. I'd like to welcome Liam Wilson to my podcast. Hi, Liam. How are you? Evening, Lou. Uh, yeah, I'm well, thanks. How are you? I'm doing really well, thank you. I am in my happy place. I love uh, hosting podcasts and chatting with people I meet randomly on Instagram. Um, so I'm really pleased you're here <laughs> and, we've, and we've connected. Um, yeah. I know you are a fan of the show, uh, so I'm even more pleased to have you here. Um, and uh, I mentioned at the beginning um, the journey of recovering from addiction and that's going to be primarily the the topic of the show we're going to be talking about mental health and your journey um to your current rank which is a blue belt um mm -hmm. tell me how you started training jiu-jitsu and, and where it came about uh yeah so so i had a passing passing interest in jiu-jitsu for like several years um and and, and never really followed it through um and i i went i went away for the week uh, to tenerife with my now wife and uh, it was just a week of indulgence lou to be honest you know uh, too much beer too much sun and um i came back and i just felt i felt terrible you know physically i was aching all over and um i just really had this sense of like lacking lacking purpose yeah. you know doing all right in uh, my career generally and and other other aspects of life but this there was this unfulfilled space within within me that was quite palpable um so i, I said to my my wife and i was just like i'm gonna i'm gonna give jujitsu a go and uh, googled jujitsu in sheffield and, and gracie baha nixon came up and um checked out the website and stuff and I thought, yeah, I'll have, I'll have a go at that. And, um, and here we are 18 months later. So, um, so yeah, it's been a journey. Fantastic. I mean, first of all, um, thank you for sharing honestly, um, how you were feeling. Um, but being away in Tenerife, surely there can never be too much sun when we're based here in the UK and it's still a bit chilly, although we, we're now getting a few more sunnier days. <laughs> but, you know, I, I know how indulgent, you know, maybe a, um, an all-inclusive holiday, all of the alcohol, all of the food can be. Um, what was it about that holiday that made you feel the way you did when you got back? I, I think it was really just that defining moment that, I, you know, for, for many years, I've kind of let the pursuit of pleasure uh, control my my uh, like direction in life in many respects. And yeah. and uh, and that 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 holiday and, and to, to be fair, Lou, it wasn't a bad holiday. You know, we had a great time. We had a good laugh yeah. and stuff. But it, it was really. Um, it was really that defining moment that I, I felt um, not through like a lens of shame either, but I just thought, right, there's, there's definitely time for a change now. Yeah. Um, and something that I need to, to kind of infuse into my lifestyle. Um, and that was really the, the catalyst for, for starting yeah. to train, I would say. Um, do, you think, do you think that was without putting words into your mouth, do you think you'd kind of had so much of a good thing um and kind of then reflecting and going is this everything in life yeah I, I, absolutely you know um you know the, the the pursuit the pursuit of pleasure can only it can only get it can only get us so far really and um and it'll never give us an indication of what our our potential is yeah. Um, um, you know, it, it, it's for me uh, personally. It's always been more of a mechanism of of soothing uh, rather than anything else. So um, yeah, and for me, I want to explore the depths of my what 
who and what I am and and I, w- I want to to see my potential and that and that usually is is cast through some form of voluntary suffering I would say yeah okay. we'll, we'll delve into that voluntary suffering in a minute because um that immediately you know takes me to being armbarred or choked Liam on the mat yeah yeah but, me uh, too. Let, <laughs> let, let, <laughs> let's get to that bit um yeah so um I know you're a practicing Buddhist and part of that is about the journey um kind of the, the process and the journey um rather than the kind of the end goal as it were how has that impacted your attitude to now training jiu-jitsu yeah that's a, i think that's a fantastic question i think in the in the early days there were there were a lot of blind spots in terms of how my ego was working when i first started you know i played a uh, played rugby for 16 years, I will say not at a particularly high standard, but used to contact and used to getting stuck in. Yeah. And um, I suppose like the egos are fronted where we're like proven wrong in, in some way. So the early the early days and, you know, uh, and that, that kind of comparing mind was yeah. quite, um, was quite present, you know, at first. But I think o- over time that, that, that those, those kind of discriminating and um you know self like flagellating voices start to dim after a while and then you realize that this is um you know it's it's much more deeper than the the uh than the you know the the it's deeper than the mind it's deeper than the ego it's a, it's a long term journey into the depths i would say yeah. uh, if okay. that makes sense it, it kind of does, but I'm slightly clueless um, comparing that with ego and training a sport. Maybe unpick some of the things that you've just said um, for those of us that might not have quite grasped the kind of the idealistic, ethereal concepts. What? Give me some real examples um, about being on the rugby pitch or being on the training mats that some of us can relate to yeah yeah thanks thanks for pulling me back there I I tend to go off into the esoteric quite quickly um so so you know if you if you train in jiu-jitsu and like uh you know perhaps you get to a couple of strikes in and then some you know ex, ex new training partner comes in then then you know you get you get you get submitted by them or they are more proficient at a particular t- uh, technique or things like this yeah then then that is you know i think a lot of us have that experience you know you think oh i've been training longer than that person i should i should be more proficient i should be better than what i am yeah. uh, or what have you but uh, and and i think really that comes that's quite a humbling experience uh and uh, but i think what I, what I what i'm trying to get at is that you know jujitsu very much grounds us in reality yeah it is is the i think is really the core of, of what i'm trying to say so not yeah. what we we construct about ourselves and what we think we should be it just it, it gives us that very direct feedback as to where we are in yeah. on on that path if that makes sense it it does but how do you deal with those days where you might be with um, a training partner that is more experienced than you and then you're caught for the arm bar for the third kind of session in a row. And you're kind of giving yourself such a hard time. Like, I should be better at this. You know, I should have learned to defend this by now. Um, and actual fact, it might take double the amount of time for you to, you know, deal with that particular situation. But how would your kind of new mindset help you deal with those I, I want to say tough days, but actually in the scheme of life, it's not tough at all. Um, mm. You know, dealing with that, oh, I should have done this. Oh, I feel really grumpy and quite downhearted. And you walk away with not a smile on your face walking out the gym doors. Um, so so I think cultivating a, a state, um, a mindset of acceptance is is quite a powerful technique um something that we um you know if you if you learn meditation and if i can just in, in if you indulge me for a second i'll go into a bit of an acronym 
So it's uh, rain. So um, this applies to the mat, I believe, and and meditative practice or any 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 context really. So rain. So recognize. So recognize what you are feeling in the moment and the thoughts and the thing, things like this. Accept. Yeah. Investigate and non-identification. So so what what really just hitting home in terms of acceptance. It, it it is what it is. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't need a, a a value judgment or anything like this. It is what it is, and I think that's for me that's really uh, um, really the power. What, what you know, part of the power of jujitsu, it yeah. allows you to accept things as they are, okay. uh, and uh, and learn and cultivate a mindset of learning. So why did that happen? It's yeah. not because I'm a deficient person yeah. or I'm less than in some way. It's just it, it it happened because I'd probably put my arm there too quickly or I didn't move yeah. into this position and it happened. Yeah. <laughs> it just happened. And that's so, fine. So remind me, life. recognize, yeah, so re- investigate, yep. and, and no, non-identification. So that's non- the acronym. Non-identification. So yeah. expand the non-identification bit because I get the recognize. And I'm literally going, my eyes roll in my head. I then smile when I'm kind of recognizing that I've done something that is going to make me more vulnerable for a a submission, for example. Mm. I go, okay, I accept that. And now I'm kind of going into a defense mode. Um, But the, uh, okay, so recognize, uh, identify, no, recognize. Recognize, accept. Accept investigation investigate so okay let's do the investigation bit uh, and just and is this practice kind of quite speedy are you able to kind of put this into practice quite quickly in your jiu-jitsu game now yeah i think you know 10 10 20 seconds okay just uh you know yeah you, you have like the lulls within roles yeah. you know or, or what have you when you're training and uh yeah, just uh, just sit there for ten seconds and and and, and yeah. see what's going on there. Uh, I, f- I find that really really quite helpful. Okay, so just cover off the last two in kind of a a swifter uh, summary, if you will. Yeah, yeah, sure. So so invest investigate. Yeah. So uh, whatever comes up in in the mind, let's just yep. see what's see what's going on there. Yeah um give us an indi- you know in 10 20 seconds we might not you know but we might have a bit of an indication and yeah. and, and non identification so we just touched on that uh, a couple of minutes ago so it's uh, it's not it doesn't have to form part of our identity that we got tapped okay okay so is that externalizing the thing that's happened a bit more rather yeah, than I've, it in yeah, absolutely. We just okay. we can just look at it for you know for what for what it is. Yeah. Um, uh, and we don't have to identify with it. Uh, like just building on what I was saying earlier, you know, it doesn't have to form like a negative part of our identity. We just accept it for, for what yeah. it is. Yeah, um, I mean, I I do love that element of jujitsu. You know, one role, it's done. Um, you know, you're not taking anything away from it, especially if you're literally going into another sparring session, um, you know, with somebody else, then, you know, but it would be really nice if I could remember some of those bits. Um, and if the, the next opponent has those tactics for me to bring some of that into the next sparring session. <laughs> yeah, That's, yeah, absolutely. We, we need to continue. We need an umbrella in between, Liam. We need yeah, yeah, abs- absolutely. <laughs> bit of a bit of a debrief. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Um, yeah. That sounds really helpful. Yeah. Um, what? Why martial arts and why jujitsu in the first place? Because there are many different activities that you could have picked, but why exactly jujitsu? Are you of the UFC Jackie Chan era, or was there something else for you? Um. Yeah. So, I I played rugby for quite a while, and I took too many knocks to the head. So, any striking sports were were kind of out of the question, really. 
And um, I looked at judo and I, I, I'd already got a dodgy knee and a hip and I didn't fancy getting slammed to the floor continuously. Yeah. Uh, so I just kind of just landed on jujitsu and, uh, okay. you know, it's been popularized over recent years, hasn't it, through Joe Rogan and, uh, and what have you. Yeah. I really talk about the benefits and um yeah it just seemed to make sense Lou to be honest good I I know one of my previous guests when she was doing her research it was like all the successful people train jiu-jitsu and I'm like yep yeah, we're on that path to success our own personal Indeed. success as it were yeah um, absolutely so we're, we're all on that journey <laughs> yeah 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 definitely okay. well said it- <laughs> this is a Jiu-Jitsu Lou podcast with me, Lou Temlett, coming to you from the UK. Go and check out the latest video clips over on Instagram at ju.jitsu.lu. And as you're listening or watching on your favourite podcast platform, I'd really appreciate you dropping the show a rating and a review. Today, I am having a conversation with Liam Wilson. So, Liam, you are now a blue belt. Tell me about the kind of back end of your white belt journey to your blue belt. How was that for you? Um, yeah, it's uh, it it was it took tough going. I think, I think it's like you're on the cusp of getting the blue, you're on the cusp of getting. Sorry, my dog's just walked in. We're on the cusp of getting your blue belt, and uh, yeah, you want to you want to step up your game a bit, don't you? And um, uh, and what have you? And yeah, it was yeah, it was it was great. Did, did you <laughs> did you feel the pressure? And was it a surprise to be promoted? Yeah, it did come as a surprise. Actually, um, it was a real it was a really beautiful moment. Actually, it re- it really was. Uh, and then it was like got got the blue belt, and then it was straight in, straight into rolling. Uh, I was like, I've not developed superpowers, unfortunately. Oh, oh I thought that's exactly what was supposed to happen when you were promoted to your blue belts. <laughs> no, it's fake fake news. That I'm afraid, Lou. <laughs> they lied. They lied. Oh. Yeah, it's all right. I've not seen anything. I'm I'm in denial, Liam. I'm I'm quite comfortable where I am right now. Um, well, it's fun, funny. Sorry to cut you off there, but it's funny you should say that because um, uh, I wouldn't mind my white belt black back, to be honest. You can't but, have it. <laughs> it's, it. I've looked at Gracie Barha's policies, and they don't allow it. I'm afraid, so I'm, no. I'm stuck. I'm stuck with this, the weight of responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, yeah. I just want to kind of go back to the ego piece because. Um, you know, we we come to the mats and, you know, as a, a fresh white belt coming in to start training, you know, we don't necessarily think we know it all, but we're using external forces. You know, it might be strength or, you know, some previous knowledge of MMA or, or something else. But how how do you think white belts, or have you got any advice for white belts starting training and what would be really helpful for them to accept kind of uh, or learn prior to stepping on the mats as a white belt? Yeah. So I think, I think what I would say is um, drop expectations of yourself um, approach training with a beginner's mind yeah, and um, relax. I think the key, the key for me would be just, just relax yeah. It's going to be difficult at first, especially if you've not done it before. Yeah. You've not moved your body in that way before. Um, it's going to be difficult. Um, and yeah, relax. I think relax is definitely, definitely up there, you know, um, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. I remember feeling quite a lot of tension and, you know, I experienced rolling with um, or sparring with white, you know, relatively new white belts. And I'm very fortunate enough to be able to, you know, spar with blue belts and brown belts and, Mm. um, you know, not too many black belts yet um, because I'm only a a white belt. Um, Mm. But the, the game does become very much slower, more considered, just a more of a, a mindset thing Mm. than a physical um you know i'm masters four now 
um, mm. and in the super heavy, so over 79 kilos for a woman, um, at kind of, you know, competition level. Um, not that I've competed yet, but, you know, using, using my weight and my pressure ability or my strength, um, you know, used to mm. do quite a lot of weights. Um, and you think that that's going to carry you through. And of course it doesn't, you know, anyone, any size, any, anybody, um, can step onto the mats and do as well as they wish to do or even better. Mm, yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, I, I, I like your point about as, as time develops, you're more considered, you're more, um, inclined to work the tech, work the technique and for any new starters um, and you know my professor says this it, it, you know it's not the world championship yeah. it's a treat it like treat it like a game because if you treat it like a game you'll you'll learn quicker yeah. and I think if I could just touch on a point there you know um, I think modern society puts so much pressure on us to like hustle and win and take everything so seriously yeah. Um, and adults don't play games, but mm-hmm. just relaxing and, and and treating it like that, you will learn quicker. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you really will. Um, I, think. I love that. I love that. Um, I'm feeling very relaxed right now. I'm considering my next um, kind of thing, my next sparring yeah. session. But uh, I will be on the mats tomorrow lunchtime. Looking forward to that. Um, Good on you. One of the things that um, strikes me every now and again as a white belt, you know, we learn so many different techniques, so many different sequences and moves. And then when I'm reflecting, when I'm not on the mats, I go, well, there's mount, there's guard, you know, there's side control. Um, that that's about it and all the bits in between but actually primarily if i'm I, I don't know whether i've missed any but you know that's the core of it and then it's almost like you know re re kind of skinning an onion and layering back up those layers rather than peeling them away you know the, the core mm. is still the core um but just as a a concept you know i, I think many of us think about jiu-jitsu when we're not on the mats um, and it probably takes up quite a lot of our mind space, which, you know, can be quite a healthy thing, uh, especially if we're not always watching, you know, techniques and reels, um, <laughs> which which <laughs> some of us do indulge hours and hours in watching. Um, but equally, you know, uh, having video footage of our own performance, if we if we mm. so have any. Um Give me your thoughts on, um, you know, your journey now as a blue belt and where you're heading towards. Yeah, so so I, I really liked what you said there because it's, um, you know, our p- professor Gareth, Gareth Neal, he was talking about um, as he's developed to, to black belt and like you said about going through the different the different moves and then coming back round to a particular area to so say mount for example and then looking at it with com- completely new eyes uh, as the year as the years progress so i suppose in a sense it's that uh, continuous process of uh, refinement really yeah. refine uh, refining and refining uh, and that acceptance that you'll probably never be the finished article yeah. you know some black belts say they get to black belt and then that's when it really starts you know in a sense so um uh which is crazy to think that's a heck of a long journey i hope hope Uh, you're in it for for the longevity and the you know are you absolutely (laughs) yeah that that, that's how i feel i mean the the only the test that i have is that i just go to myself can i train today that is the only barometer i use to to whether i train and and um all that that kind of like self-imposed pressure since I've got my blue belt, has as, as actually just faded away. Nice. And it's uh, it's really going more into the the depths of jiu-jitsu and, like, uh, developing a strategy and um, a game plan. Because I'm, like, um, I'm, I'm a short, stocky guy. I'm not going to be playing any of these fancy open guards with any level of proficiency anytime soon. So 
Um, I love that. I love that. We're, like, all, we're, we're always working on guards, always. I was like, my, my current thing is just to try and... I did see some moves the other day, and I felt like if I kept doing the stretches that my body would actually get longer and my legs might but uh, you know guard spider guard close yeah. guard we'll just keep working on it yeah absolutely yeah yeah keep building the castle <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh so yeah that that pressure's gone and it's just um it's just turning up and and yeah. and being an ambassador ambassador for the academy as well i feel yeah nice I love that. So if you're asking yourself, can I train jiu-jitsu today? What happens when you go, no, I can't? What does that really look like for you? Uh, what if, if I actually can't? Like, well, if, uh... if, you're, if you're asking yourself that kind of metaphorical question and your answer is no, what sort of place are you in and how can you turn yourself around for that to be a yes more often? if you happen to have no's yeah so i mean there are there are times when i really don't fancy it and uh, i commute over from uh, from doncaster from work and and what have you and i'm driving down driving down the m18 and i, I can yeah. turn off before i get to the academy to my house and that, there's that there's that inner dialogue all, all the time it's like you could just go back and watch netflix mate it's fine um but uh we had a, a seminar with legato uh, about a year ago and he was saying just just get in and do the warm-up it doesn't matter how you feel and what have you because and and and, and using that test as just turn just rock up yeah bring it all bring it all in there yeah you know uh bring it all out bring and and, and it and it's and it's and it's served me well so so far um uh yeah yeah definitely that's good i do love the gracie baja seven minutes uh warm up um i used to do when when we used to have dvds i used to do um can't remember what the guy's name was tybo and the kickboxing mm. warm up and all of the workouts were like seven minutes and i used to get up every morning um believe it or not i'm so not a morning person now um mm. even though i've got two young kids you kind of uh, it's the late nights so um mm. we're recording it's a sunday night and we're recording this podcast to be out on some early saturday morning which i will mm. schedule but um, it's that intense seven minutes that you go in the big scheme of life, in the big scheme of a day, seven minutes, getting that warm up done is, whilst it's intense, it's achieving all of those kind of warm up moves if you're at a Gracie Baja site um, and going, yeah, I'm, I'm warmed up, I'm ready. I've practiced all the techniques, ready to mm. be in a sparring session. Everything I need, I've done and I'm ready. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm intrigued with the you know how many times you've actually driven home rather than go to training, Liam. I, I think in the um, I think in the early days, the early days because you know when you're doing something new, it's like you have to get you have to get up for it every time. In a yeah. sense, you know, it's it's alien, really. So I. Some some days, some week. I didn't train for two weeks at one bit or a month, you know, uh, because it was just that. I just, yeah, that that gremlin, shall we call it, won out. But I think as as that journey's um, developed, um, it, it that's that's kind of diminished, and I, I really just look forward to going now, yeah. uh, because I know I really. Um, I really value the therapeutic qualities of, of, of training. Um, and I know that I'll, no matter what kind of day I've had at work or whatever's going on, washing machine breaks, shuffling dog needs to take good advice. I know that if I just have a couple of hours training, yeah, that, that it'll change the trajectory of the day. Yeah. Uh, consistently, consistently as well, you know? Um, yeah. That's so yeah. good. Um, I know you, um, you know, you mentioned about being an ambassador for your school um, and just kind of being there. And I know many of us return to the mats day in, day out because we built 
ourselves or kind of we're part of a community and actually it's that joy of seeing other human beings that love the art as much as we do oh absolutely and and just for just for the benefit of your listeners it's important to make a distinction that i'm not a gracie baja ambassador which is a a, a, a program in itself it's just a more g- general, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I I chatted with Barbara Pellegrino the other day, and um, she was saying, you know, it's about competition and points and lots of other factors. Um, and I think, but but you know, any jujitsu school needs people like you know you and me and our listeners to just show up and be there. You know, it's our presence that make the difference for a community mm. and you know new people that are coming in and you know others that have been training year in year out for maybe 20 years you know mm. it's kind of a a nice concept to have you know build a friend network and a community around us absolutely well said i think um yeah so i, I suppose like getting getting my blue belt it was that it's really a sense of like uh, i see it as like a sense of responsibility so yeah. when you know new like i can relate empathize with new people when they're coming into the gym and they might be nervous there's the you know a lot of unfamiliar faces doing an unfamiliar thing so it's it takes a lot of guts to just get through the door but having someone to come and say hello put you at ease give you an insight into the format of the class and yeah. the curriculum uh that doesn't necessarily just have to be the school owner it yeah. can be everyone that rep- you know, represents represents the club, and uh, yeah. on that point of community community that you make, Lou. It's um, you know, if, if quite a few years ago, I used to be a Samaritans volunteer, and it's there's quite a lot of quite a lot of loneliness in our modern world. Yeah, and uh, what we we are, we're social beings. We need connect, we thrive off connection, and that you know you'll you'll find that in a gym. You know, yeah. made made mates for life. Really, yeah. really have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've changed gyms. I'm still connecting and, you know, very good friends with with people I used to train with um, to the point where, you know, we'll rent somewhere and we'll rock up and, you know, just have an afternoon training together. Um, and it feels like we've only seen each other the day before. And of course, it may well be, you know, a couple mm. of months or a couple of weeks. Um, but I, I think you're right in saying that this is you know, it's not school friends, but it's a way of adults making lifelong friends that, you know, we become so isolated in our kind of where we may live, um, you know, work may be miles and miles from home um, and, you know, ships in the night, as it were, with neighbours. But, um, mm. you know, it's having those neighbours next to you in the in the, the mer- metaphorical neighbours in, in the gym and uh, mm. sparring with them. Uh, uh, yeah absolutely you know uh in the academies you you find people from all walks of life but there's something about being connected under a common purpose is is uh is really powerful i feel yeah absolutely um i feel very grateful to have connected with you liam i feel like there's more to discover but how can people follow your journey and uh find out when you might be competing in your blue belt career uh oh yeah uh, uh <laughs> tbc <laughs> uh, yeah uh, uh, absolutely. it will happen uh, at some point um yeah so I, i'm i'm on i'm on instagram predominantly uh my uh, ha- instagram handle is uh, redemption scripts and uh, uh i post my musings on there and there's a lot of a lot of jujitsu content as well so if anyone wants to follow me then fabulous please do so good um one tip for a new blue belt please liam yeah coming from a new blue belt to a new blue belt i would i would say drop all your expectations yeah and just just get just 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 buckle in for the long haul yeah I would I would say that's that's what com- comes to mind. Nice. Thank you for that. Um I think you know once we've started this game then it is a long game and we are in it for life. Um and you know I think all of us uh, kind of 
desire to have a community and you know a focus to keep us going and you know seeing the likes of some of the you know kind of more experienced um jiu-jitsu professionals or amateurs um throughout life you know uh, they're still smiling mm. and still showing up on the mats regularly so you know what could be better yeah yeah absolutely yeah yeah fantastic liam we will talk again um take care of yourself uh and uh your well-being and your mental health um i know we didn't continue talking much about kind of recovery from addiction but um we will be following your journey and supporting you from afar um and i do believe that um uh, you know we'll have a, a trip up north very soon i'm accumulating a lot of uh show guests from you know yorkshire you know further north and even the us so um have gee we'll travel <laughs> yeah you'd be more than welcome uh bring yeah yeah that's that'd be great great to have you along yeah fantastic We'd, yeah we're all right us northerners okay all right okay I, i'll make it past watford um anyway <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much liam <laughs> Lovely. Thanks. Thank you, Lou. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for telling your friends about this show. And as soon as this episode ends, I'd really appreciate you dropping the show a rating and a review. Thanks again for listening. Catch you on the next episode of the Jiu Jitsu Lou podcast.